Next thing I want to talk about are some of the questions that came up last night. These are great questions, by the way. These are some of the ones that I remember. There was a lot of them. Um, but like, you know, what strategy do you, do you play? The w great question was, how do you win on short and long rolls with the same strategy? That's a miracle strategy. Um, do you bet different on random versus a dice influencer or dice controller? And do you bet differently on yourself? Those are some great questions that were asked. And I'll tell you this, the answer to those questions is the same for all of them, right? Jeremy says this on his channel all the time. Um, craps, you win at craps by, by you, you pick what you think is gonna happen. You bet on what you think is about to happen. That's basically it, right? If you're on the number, when it comes out with a bunch of money, you win. That's how you win at craps. Um, there's no way to know what's coming out. No dice influencer on the planet is, is sniping numbers. So you, nobody knows what's coming. You, you think you know what's coming, you hope what's coming. You don't know what's coming, right? So you gotta be there, you gotta be on the number when it rolls, it's timing. Timing is a big part of craps. The amount of money you bet and where that money comes from is a big part of craps. So Ken did a video last night where he was kind of ragging on folks who press all the time. Pressing has a place in this game. The idea of pressing is twofold. One is let's run our bets up high so we can make more money. If you're pressing like a fool, you're gonna lose because you don't collect. But pressing gets your bets up high and the source of the, of the amount of money on those bets is that the money came from the casino's rack, not your rack. So you're betting with, although it is technically speaking your money, it's money you didn't bring. There's a, there's a goodness to that, right? Um, unless you go a little bit insane. So yeah, craps is easy, right? Be on the number when it comes out and have money on it that's worth it. That's the entirety of craps, right? There's no strategy that answers all those questions. There's no one strategy that works perfectly on the short, medium, and long rolls. It just doesn't exist. There's no strategy other than pure don't that wins on the seven because that strategy has a hole in it too. There's holes everywhere. And I think that a lot of it to me comes down to what we're talking about today, which is going to be bet leveling or bet sizing. The, 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 the show I, today, I named it Size Matters because um, I think there's a lot to this and I think we're gonna be on sizing all week. Today I wanna talk about ratios and scale. Maybe a little bit of a math lesson in there somewhere. Um, things we'll talk about today are like don't pass sizing on, on, on hedging, don't pass sizing on hybrids, how do you hedge? Um, but I wanna talk more about the progression systems. I wanna talk more about the Labuschagne. We talked about it about two months ago. The Dayland Bear we always talk about because we have a Dayland Bear expert in the group here, and the Stern method has been brought up a number of times too. All of these things are designed to get more money on the numbers that are most likely to roll, or more money in action, so that when the number does roll, you've got a proper bet level out there to capitalize on. I think that is where we make money in this game. It came up last night, Kevin brought this up, and I made a statement in Jeff's show, which was, um, he's like, hey, wow, I can take the, the, um, the, the progression, the one, three, two, four progression, I can use that at blackjack. I'm like, hell yeah, you can. Matter of fact, most of those progressions came from Baccarat, blackjack, roulette, right? 50, 50, 50, 50 style betting, where that stuff came from. We've applied it to craps on a couple of the more key bets. I think sizing ratios and scale are great. I see that Jacob is here. Um, Stern will eat you alive. I have broken the stern so many times. Just let me just try this out and to zero and the payoffs aren't huge. <laughs> when you see how the payoffs come back, it's interesting. Um, Jacob, I'm glad you're here because you did a show last night or yesterday on, on the Iron Cross. And I think Jacob's, if I'm not mistaken, you're starting a whole series of Iron Cross videos. You made my favorite point as your first point, which was the leveling of the Iron Cross is enormous. The three to one ratio on that strategy is make or break to me. You can't go out there two to one. Two to one, it'll bleed you to death. Three to one, you can make money. And actually your tiered regression that you did was fantastic. So you combine a couple of things. One is the right ratio, two is, is, is a de-leveling of your bets as you go. I think that was really, really cool to watch. And if y'all haven't seen that, make sure you get on that, on that, that, um, that series. You know, we all subscribe to each other, so make sure that you just don't miss it because um, Jacob's been doing a lot more sports than craps lately. Um, but he's one of the best craps minds in the business. So I, I 
definitely to me, that's a, that's a bookmark thing uh, for sure. So anyway, with all that said, let's head over to the table real quick. And I'm gonna run a few things out here. Give me a minute to get over there switched out and get that light turned on. And since we mentioned it, let me reiterate Jacob's point on the Iron Cross. And we'll run a few bets out here. And I think what Jacob said was, the minimum that you should have on the Iron Cross is this, where you've got three units on the six and the eight, and 15 he had last night, I would do it here, $10 in the field. That's the proper ratio. I've actually got locally, as you know, a $5 table. So I can play the Iron Cross at $15. I can do 18 on the six and the eight, and 15 on the five. Let me get these bets set out here for you. I can do it like this with one nickel in the field. Now, I'm gonna be here forever trying to make money like this, but I can go three to one at a $5 table. That's still an okay bet to make if you're okay with grinding for a while. Doesn't matter, I tell you all the time, I don't give a shit what the money is. I don't care if that's a, if that's a hundred and these are three hundreds. It doesn't matter what the value of that check is. It does not matter. What matters is that you have one of them here and three of them here. Okay, if my bankroll is 150 bucks because that's what I've got, and I'm betting at 15 and five, that is just as valuable, just as profitable on a percentage basis as somebody who's going with 100 and 300 up in here. Okay, doesn't matter what the value of the check is. What matters is how many of those you're getting back on a win or how many you're getting back on a loss. So up in here, let's say that you do hit a five, a six or an eight at the little tiny level, that's a $21 win. Right, that's a $5 loss, a $5 replacement, you're bringing back 16 bucks to your rack. That's good, that's great. If this bet was 10 bucks though, instead, that win that you earned up in here, when you replace your $10 field loss, now you're bringing back so much less money. The percentage you're bringing back is so much less to you. That's why we say it's a bleed at levels beyond three to one. I want these bets to matter. They do roll enough to matter. And again, if you're 14 ways to win here and 16 ways to win here, you're gonna win this more often. And I get it that that's a lower amount, right? One unit versus two units is a lower amount, but overall, the way to make money in the Iron Cross, I think, is that ratio. So that's the first ratio we have to make sure we talk about. And, and no matter what you're doing Iron Cross based, if you're playing the crossbow that I put out a few weeks back, or you're playing the standard cross, that Jacob is, is talking about this week, get that ratio right. If you don't have the ratio right, don't play it. You're just gonna sit here and grind way too much. It's not worth it. If you're, if you're three to two, or God forbid, one to one, it's, it's just flat out not worth playing at those levels. The other ratio I'll talk about as a simple example is, <clears throat> you know, my favorite strategy, which is the Headless Horseman, which at its core would be a quarter, and then one, two, three, come bets that travel up all at the same size. That's a good strategy. Okay, that's actually a great strategy. And again, one that's designed to beat the early sevens. So here on the seven, you're gonna earn 50 bucks. If this one travels, the next one comes in. The seven comes, you win a quarter because those two cancel out, you win down here. If that one travels and you're here, now the seven comes in, we tie. That's a bummer, but you're strong against the seven for three rolls. Why not? be more of attacking the seven and doing $10 come bets. And again, the ratio here changes a little bit. In fact, I'd probably want you to see you going here, three to one if you can do it, or half size it, do it at, at 20 bucks and make these bets half the size. So in this case, what happens is this, the, on the seven here, you win 30 on the first roll. Let's say we had a point of five, doesn't matter what the point is. And it travels up on the second one, <clears throat> if the seven comes now, those two cancel, you win 20. It travels up. When the third one, the seven comes, <clears throat> you lose two, right? These two cancel, essentially. Um, you win $10 out of the end, on the end of that thing. You're strong on the seven, excuse me, <clears throat> on all three bets as you're moving through the process here. When, they're, when, they're, when these are half the size of that, you're strong all three times coming out. And then when you finally get all three of them set, the seven at this point only really cost you one bet instead of costing you multiple bets. If you're out here, let's do another shooter all at the same level. 
The seven at this point cost you half your money versus here it costs you one. That's an interesting ratio to look at. When you're betting things like this, the ratio I think really is important. In fact, I've been toying with this strategy at a four to one ratio because I think that's even more powerful. And, and imagine this, $100 on the don't and then three $25 bets. These are one fourth the size, four to one ratio. Well, look at the ratio here. Assume you get past the come out and you're on the five. On the first come bet, you're up 125. On the second come bet, these two cancel, you're still winning 100. On the third come bet, you lose two, you win one and a quarter, you're still up 75 bucks. And now, <clears throat> once all three come bets are set, your don't pass not only covers them, but here's the next ratio conversation. This come bet, or this don't, don't pass bet, is more than them. So the seven isn't a hedge, the seven is a play. You're looking to win money on that on that bet, not hedge out what you've got up here. Now you can work these bets up in here, pull back profit, and always have a strong play on the seven, not just an even money play, which I don't like seeing even money plays. So think about things like that when you're doing the horseman style betting, by altering the bet sizes of these, you have so many more options. And again, when these things pay, right, the nine comes down and gets paid, and you bring, you bring your initial bet back to your rack, and the next bet goes out, this winnings can be done a lot of ways. You can take this and replace it. You can cut this in half, right? Let's take five units out of that and grab two numbers and bring back a nickel. You have a lot more options when your bet sizes are small. That's an instant regression. And now look at the power of that seven. The power of the seven is even, even stronger once you've reduced it down. You're in, actually increasing what you can do here. I think ratioing these bets is a critical, critical piece to how we play that out. So let's again, clear that out. Again, more food for thought on bet leveling. So another one that we'll talk through, and I think, um, and Jacob's here, he can correct me if I'm wrong, but um, when you play something like the six, seven, eight, and again, ratio here matters big time. Quarter on the don't. Let's just do it at the, at the simple, low, easy level to do the math on. Quarter on the don't, with $12, six, $12, eight. What position are you in right now? You're in a tie position. A lot of folks that play hybrid do this. They will say statements, and I've heard this on YouTube countless times. I've got 25, so I can bet 25 up here, I'm covered. That's a way to think about it, but that's a hedge, right? And people will say the pure hedge is, an, is a non-starter for most people. And here you're saying, well, we're gonna accept the tie on the early seven out, and then here, once you get start getting some payments in here, once these things start, start paying out, now you can say, okay, well, yeah, I've got some profit, and if the seven comes now, I'm actually ahead. What about, what about ratioing this a different way? And our friend, Crypto Schmidt, though, who runs the YouTube channel, uh, Iniquities Party Pit, suggests this. I think this is an interesting way to do it, which is to go double on the don't. Go $50 down there, versus a 25 hour six and eight. So again, ratio, make this two to one or even higher if you wanna be really aggressive, be higher with it and go 75 against, against the 12 hour bets or 75 against 18 up in here for each of those bets. And think about this being a power play. It's not a hedge, it's a power play on the seven while you're earning money up in here. And in here, Whatever you earn in here just gets stacked up. Your, your instant profit, and you're really running for the seven here. So instead of just going one to one and saying, well, I got myself covered, go two to one in here or go two to one up in here. Go 30 and 30 and just a quarter and play the seven at a lower level and say, I'll take some juice on the seven, but really what I'm going for is this. It comes down to what are you targeting? You targeting the seven? You targeting this or you targeting a tie? You gotta make a decision, I think, and this right here, there's no decision being made. You're, not, you're, you're, you're sitting on top of the fence. I would rather you pick a side and do that. Okay, that's another idea of ratio. The six, seven, eight, great strategy. I think this ratio versus these is an important one. Either go two to one here or two to one here. Whatever direction you choose to do the two to one, I think ratio is a big one. The last thing I want to talk to you about, and again, more, this is all just kind of food for thought, 
is in your hedging. So let's take a look at, we can do, we can actually do $100 on the don't. This is about the point of time where most of us go, ooh, we're puckering up a little bit. That's a big bet on the don't pass. And you're starting to want to hedge that, right? You may not hedge, I don't, here. If I have a $10 don't, I don't give a shit. That's money that I'm okay with based on my bankroll. The bigger don'ts, now you start getting squirrely. You get up in the $100 level, you get squirrely. Um, let's remove the 11 out of the mix. Actually, let's do, we'll, we'll do 100. Oh, let's make it 75. We'll, we'll, do this, we'll do this first, and I'll, and I'll show you why I'm doing this. Let's say we have 75 on the don't. What's the obvious hedge here? The obvious hedge here is this, right? $5 on the yo. What is $5 on the yo pay? Somebody tell me in the chat, what is $5 on the yo pay? Right, that's five times 15, 75 bucks, last I checked, okay? That's a one for one in there, right? That's a one for one hedge, which again, it's kissing your sister that there's nothing to be gained by that other than this is a bet to me that's a weak bet. That's trying to, that's trying to save this bet versus just going here and trying to attack that bet, okay? Now, the seven is my friend. Right, I'm looking for a, or the 11, I'm looking for an 11 now. Now the 11 pays me 125. And while I'm there, I'll often do this. I'll drop a couple of bucks out here on the, on the midnight. Now every craps number is my friend. The only thing I care about now is the seven. The seven is what's gonna crush me here. But if I'm doing this, I'm gonna attack the tie. If I get a 12, I'm gonna take 60 bucks out here. If I get an 11 that used to take my 75, now it earns me 75. This pays 150, I earn 75 bucks. When I hedge, I hedge for more. From a ratio standpoint, if you're just gonna be a hedger and just do that, you're gonna bleed. If you're gonna hedge like this, you're a little bit in attack mode. And sure, you're giving up 12 bucks out of 75, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with making this bet be worth $63. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with reducing the power of a high bet, right? At the quarter level, if I'm gonna bet two on the yo, which wins 30, so it's a $5 profit plus a dollar over here, and my bet's worth 23 bucks or 22 bucks, that starts to be a little too much shaved off of that bet at that lower level. At the higher levels, totally cool to do that, right? So why not have a $100 don't and back that up with a $10 yo? And again, a $2 12. That's a great ratio, right? This still, wins 150, right? You're gonna be up 50 on the 11. You're gonna be up 30 on the 12. You're, of course, you're gonna be up 100 on the two or the three. You're just battling the seven now. You're battling the seven for one roll. You have a one roll battle on the seven, and as we know, 84% of the time, that bet will win, get through. Win meaning it gets through to some point. You're gonna be okay most of the time. But I think it's ratio. I think you cannot just come out here with the exact size bet that's gonna save that. Cause that's the bleed. That's the bleed. Use your hedges at higher levels. I think that's gonna be a, to me it's an interesting way to look at it. I always say to you hedge for more. This is what I mean by when I say hedge for more. I always hedge if I'm gonna do it for more. I'll give you another example. When we play the ricochet system, the ricochet system, again, is designed for, let's say we have a point of eight, doesn't matter what the point is, but let's say that's the point of eight. The ricochet wants to come through the don't come. We're trying to beat the seven, not here. We're gonna beat it here. We bypass here, we come through here with a $25 bet. To win, to get this bet to come through to behind the number, again, I'm at risk. To me, that's a $2 yo, right? I'll, I'll, I'll take maybe even three bucks on this one here. Right, I'll take three, I'll take a $45 win against a quarter, that's good, that's an attack. I'll lay the eight, and what I'll lay the eight for is this, I'll lay it for 60 bucks. I'll spread those out for you. You could lay it for 30, 30 to win 25. Seven comes, you tie. Why not? If you're gonna take the, take the risk for a one roll lay, lay it for more, lay the point for more than you're gonna lose over here. To me, that's an attack on the seven. I'll take that early seven, and that's great. We'll lose this quarter, but you're gonna win 50 on that. That's great, I'll take that $50, I'll put it where you can see it. I'll take the $50 win, right? Nets me, it nets me 25 because I lost a quarter. That's beautiful. 
hedge for more on the way out of something like that. And then once you have that thing set, now you got a great bet here on, on, on the no eight or whatever. Let's say it goes to the nine, doesn't matter. Let's say it goes to nine. That's a great bet when it slides over. You got a nice high bet and you are powerful on the seven. Again, you're gonna lose this, big deal. $22 bet now on the nine. That's great, I'll take that. I'll take the 22 bucks on the seven all day long if I can get it. But again, while I was here, while I was in position where I had to protect the don't come, hedge for more. Make yourself money when that thing comes through. Don't play from weakness. Don't play from a point of weakness. Play from a point of strength wherever you can get it. Play strong. That's my advice here. I know that sounds a little risky, um, but that's the way I think you ought to do it. Now, with that said, I have seen, I will show you this. I, I meant to kind of hide this from you, but I'll show it to you anyway. Um, somebody said to me in, in chat the other day, hedging is the worst possible thing. It's a bleed and blah, 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 right? Let's say you're here. Let's say, and if y'all remember, um, the three point blender strategy from way back, right? Um, that was a, a way to kind of get three of these things going at once. I have seen guys do the, the ricochet, lay here, come out of the don't, get one number and drop a quarter and just sit here, right? You can ratio this one too, we'll talk about that in a minute and literally have one don't come and one place bet on the same number all day long and when the, when the wind comes, when the nine rolls, you lose your don't but you win 35 bucks, your net is 10 and you live to fight another day. And this, they'll sit there and they'll bleed out and win 10 bucks or nothing. The, the seven comes, you tie and you go home. If the nine comes, you win a little bit of juice. Playing that way as a hedge, that's the legit way to play. I know people will say that's bullshit, you should never do that. But I'm telling you, if you come out of the gate rocking the lay on the point for one roll, let this travel into a number, place the number for the exact same amount where you can, that's gonna win you 10 bucks. That is gonna win you $24. Over here, you have to risk it a little bit, but again, you're gonna risk five to make 10. Okay. That's not, you're gonna brag on people who do that. I'm telling you what, the guys that stand back by the hook and have all those massive stacks of black or green or red chips, they, they see that's what they're doing. Right, the guys that are here to make a daily paycheck don't need to hit a home run. They're not here hitting home runs. They're here grinding that out all day long. And that's okay to do. That's okay to do. I wanna give you permission to play that way if you like. But the story of the day is ratio. Ratio. I'm gonna try and do some more with this style of betting. I'm gonna try and, and showcase a little bit more of bigger don'ts with smaller inside play just like this. And I think this right here, to me, that's a power play. That's a huge power play. I love doing this. A couple of collects and a press up in here and you are good. You are good to go. And in fact, once you collect enough money here, you can always pull this down if you like. You can bet the point, whatever you want to, but this right here, that ratio is beautiful. I think that's great. And I think that Crypto Schmipto who put this out as a video, um, did a really good job explaining it, and I wanted to kind of give him some credit for that and also showcase what this looks like in practice. At two to one, it's fine too, right? A two to one ratio, again, with a $5 yo coming out on this here, 75 win versus $50 out there, that's great. Lose this on an 11 and win a quarter. That's a beautiful ratio. Again, I would probably do it like this. I'd probably have that on the come out, right? Before these bets are off when I'm here, 50 here, I'll get a $25 win here, I'll get a $30 win here. I'm, I'm in business, that's to me the right ratio. Hedge for more. Don't even call it a hedge, just call it a power play. Right? We talk about the way to win at craps is to be on the number when it rolls and have enough money there to make it matter. Right? This right here is not having enough money on that number to make it matter. Actually, you'd probably need Three, which most people would do, is, is put, four, put three bucks there to win 45 against 50. That is, that's pissing away money. That money doesn't matter, right? Just go to five, make it matter. Make your bets matter. Bet on the thing that's gonna come out. If it happens to roll, you're gonna profit on it. If not, you weaken this a little bit. At the higher levels, I'm okay with a $6 weakening of that bet. That's worth it to make that play, to me. To me, these bets, are worth the investment against that size of a bet. I'll take the chance to earn profit when I can. I like to attack whenever I have a chance to attack. I'm not gonna sit out here and pray 
all the time on that bet. So there it is. That's my, that's my talk today on sizing ratios. And I know there's no answers there. There's no answers there. What I hope that you got out of that was something to think about. 